Hello and welcome to Vaccinate India in partnership with Google. This is a program that's so very important to both Google and to NDTV, a program where we try and bring you the very latest information as far as where India presently stands as far as vaccination is con concerned, whether it's the vaccines themselves, whether it's policy, and whether it is COVID, where we presently stand in this country. Now, let's just uh, give you a few details on what it is that we are looking at over here. Now, our partner Google has a policy of making information available universally. Breaking down language barriers is a key part of information on vaccines, vaccine centers. Eight languages, in addition to English, which are available on the Google website are Hindi, Bengali, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada, Gujarati, and Marathi. Now, my mother tongue happens to be Bengali, so uh, Google Maps Bangladesh vaccination center search kori, then this is what I can actually find uh, you know, easily available. So vaccination centers around me, easily accessible in various languages. We've just picked one hospital, the SCI International Hospital. It gives you the location itself over here. You can, as, and you know, you can scroll up over here. It gives you information on the uh, on um, what the ratings are. It gives you photos itself. So that's the rating that I was talking about, and it gives you uh, a feedback from somebody who's been there. So let's go to another hospital. So let's click on this hospital. This is the Summer Hospital. Um, and again, you've got all the details which are available to you. Remember, there are many languages in which Google has actually enabled this uh, to take place. So this is very useful, again, being able to know in a language which works for you, where exactly you can go, and you can actually get vaccinated. And again, COVID-19 statistics available to you in a, a plethora of languages. So this is where uh, we were in terms of cases. It went up. It's come down now after this. So again, all of the information that you actually have uh, is what you can, in English, is what you can access in several uh, languages as well. This is in Bengali. All of the important data that you seek uh, is something that's very easily available over here. But let's uh, just turn our attention to where we are presently at this week. Again, this is now in English, where we are looking at uh, the pace of vaccinations in India. So as you can see, it is uh, an upward sort of curve that we see over here. Uh, again, if you click on this bar, then you can actually get details on how many people have gotten at least one dose, the percentage of people who've gotten two doses. So this is all encouraging over here. Uh, but the problem is that the pace of vaccination, as we will demonstrate to you, is nowhere close uh, to where it needs to actually be. So again, let's take a look at the numbers. Worldwide, 11% of the global population, whoever is eligible, for vaccination has been vaccinated. But the problem is this number here uh, in India, 4.3% uh, in India, that's way under the global average. So we need to actually up that considerably because if we don't, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. 33.6 crore doses have been given, 5.93 are fully vaccinated. And it's that 5.93 number that we really need to focus on because remember it is only with two doses that you're getting close to the efficacy uh, the safety, call it what you like, that you actually need. Um, let's just uh, move to a couple of other points and give you a few more details. Now, over 35 crore doses have been administered. That's great, but that includes single dose and double dose. We are looking primarily at double dose to ensure that people uh, are safer. But while it was really encouraging when we had the numbers going up like this, as you can see, it's come down sharply uh, at this stage over here. And that's a real problem because we need uh, the vaccination numbers and the rate of vaccination to continuously go up. And this is where we can explain to you why that's the case. Remember, our target is two doses for 108 crore people who are eligible uh, by the end of the year. Why the end of the year? That's the target set by the government. Now, in terms of two doses left, it's at 181 crore people. Uh, you know, that's, that's the target over there as far as getting two doses is concerned. At the moment, the average is 42.09 lakhs. Now, the required number of daily doses to meet that year-end target is 100.49 lakh doses per day. That's more than one crore doses a day at the present rate of vaccination. The time it'll take to vaccinate all adults at the current average pace, 14 months. That's one year, two months from now. And that's not where we really want to be at all, because India wants to be like all other countries in the world, 
have the ability for people to take off their masks, uh, for people to live a relatively normal life. That can only happen if there is an element of reasonable protection. And that happens if we have a large number of our citizens, all adults, vaccinated. Now, the days left in 2021, just five months um, and 27 days. So we aren't going to get there at this pace of vaccination. Again, what is the target? The target is one crore vaccinations a day. That's what India needs to achieve. One of the most anticipated vaccines in India is Covovax, manufactured by the Serum Institute. Covovax is, in fact, Novavax. It'll be called Covovax once it's manufactured here. Now, results of Novavax indicate fantastic efficacy of 90% plus against COVID. And now, the real battle is perhaps to roll out the vaccine as soon as possible. Joining us now on NDTV for a very special interview, Stanley Erk. He's the president and CEO of Novavax. Thanks very much, Mr. Eck, for being with us. I think, uh, you know, we've got so many questions from our viewers. We've thought up some questions ourselves. So the first one is this. When will Novavax be introduced in the Indian market? Well, great question. We're working very hard to introduce the vaccine on a global basis. And, and uh, we partnered up with the Serum Institute because we thought that they would be the best global partner uh, to get the vaccine uh, around the world. And, and so we've we started tech transfer with them uh, late last year. We've developing the process. We've conducted clinical trials that show that the vaccine, as you point out, the vaccine works extraordinarily well in phase three trials in the UK and in the US. We are in the last stages of preparing all of the uh, cl clinical data, the safety data, and now the, what the manufacturing data that has to go into a licensing package. And our expectation is, is that package will be complete very soon, certainly in the, in the uh, coming quarter. And so what's the time period within which you expect regulatory approvals? Well, we, we are hoping for regulatory approval, uh, particularly in India, uh, in, the, in the third quarter. Uh, MHRA, the UK, and... Um, and uh, Europe, we, we expect about the same time in the third quarter. The U.S. will be a bit longer because they've put in a process that says once you get to that stage where you submit your regulatory package, we want you to take another 30 days, an extra 30 days, for us to process the data before you ask for emergency use. So that, that adds on another month to the U.S. on top of everybody else. Right. Would India's... Um emergency use authorization depend on uh, this vaccine by being cleared elsewhere in the world, if not in the U.S., then in Europe or in any other regulator? Is that how it yeah. would work? We, we think not. We think oh. it's possible that the uh, uh, DCGI uh, regulatory process uh, will be independent of the other regulatory processes. That's interesting. Now, uh, again, another big question. Does Novavax work against the Delta and the Delta, Delta Plus variant, which we are now reporting in India? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and in the trial that we just finished in the U.S., uh, and, and it's important to note, we're the only company that has done large efficacy trials where there have been variants circulating. The early vaccines were done... Um, primarily in areas where you had the original Wuhan strain. So we're the only ones that have a vaccine data against the UK variant and uh, some of the other variants worldwide. What we don't have, have and, and, and just to point out, what we showed was is that we have very high rates of efficacy uh, when there are variants circulating. We had 100% protection against modern and severe disease, and we were 93% protective against uh, the variants that were circulating in our in our U.S. trial. What we did not show is uh, anything against Delta because Delta was not circulating during our trial. So we don't have those data yet, and so time will tell. And so um, there are more tests being done to determine the efficacy against Delta. Is that something that's also that's simultaneously happening now? I think it is, and I, I think what, you know, our our hope, and based upon based upon the data that we have against a variety of, of variants is, is that we will have a significant amount of efficacy against Delta. I just can't tell you what that number is yet 
because we have not been in a trial where Delta has been uh, circulated. Um, so tell us a little bit in terms of the manufacturing process here in India. How many doses do you expect to manufacture in India for India? And how important is this manufacturing for, you know, for Gavi and, and for other countries around the world? Yeah, I, I think that's really an important question because the partnership is going to allow us uh, to, to very rapidly scale up production. And, and without having made any decisions of which product goes to India versus some other countries, we, we uh, actually uh, paired up Serum Institute and Novavax and, and, and made a, a bargain of a contract with this group called COVAX yeah. to supply them 1.1 billion doses between, between Serum and, and Novavax. And so that, that our forecast for production is, is that between the two of us, we will be producing as many as 100 million doses a month by the end of the third quarter, by the end of this next quarter, and up to 150 million doses a month by the end of the fourth quarter of next year. So that allows us to get to the range of two plus billion doses during 2022. Yeah. And how much would uh, each dose cost? Well, it, 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 um, it depends on where you make it, but, but in, we have, we have taken, the, taken the strategy of, of had, having tiered pricing so that we will, we will price uh, to the uh, lowest economic countries, uh, they will get the lowest price in the low single dollar, low do single dollar price per dose, and that will go up for middle income countries and for high income countries. And it's the same price for the first and second dose, right? Same price for both doses. Right. All right. So in India, uh, you know, we've got Covishield again manufactured by SII. Uh, which is about 200 odd rupees. So this would be a bit more pricey than that, right? Uh, it's likely to be somewhat more pricey than that, yes. Right. And, uh, and as you mentioned, you know, it, it's tiered. So when it goes to countries which are, are perhaps more wealthy, then it would be priced higher. Is that correct? That's right. It's, it's what we call equitable, <clears throat> sorry, equitable market access. Yes, equitable pricing uh, based upon the ability to afford it. So just one or two more questions. Um, you know, we don't uh, talk, certainly in our country, uh, about the need to vaccinate children enough. Uh, so the question is this, will this be effective for, for kids as well? Yeah, we certainly believe it will be. In fact, both we and uh, Serum Institute are conducting trials in adolescents and in uh, 12 to 17 year olds. We've got a trial going on and I believe in India we'll be starting a trial in uh, uh, kids that are two to two to seventeen years old at the same time, so it's very important to um, uh, vaccinate um, young kids and adolescents. And and thus far, you believe that you know on, on the basis of the data you've seen that it works as effectively for children and safely. Most importantly, we think it, we think it should be. We we believe that we have um, we have a couple of advantages to our products, which include. Uh, some of the best efficacy numbers um, of any vaccine, but we also have probably the most benign safety profile, and that should translate not only in adults, but into children. And we have the added advantage that our vaccine is very stable and therefore can be shipped at standard refrigerated temperatures as opposed to having to freeze yeah. the vaccine. So, you know, everyone talks about mRNA vaccines, and that's great, but, you know, you've got an, a slightly older technology which is as effective and perhaps uh, more robust, certainly in transportation, right? That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, uh, just a final question. The transfer of technology to serum, uh, the entire process of ramping up uh, manufacture, how much of a challenge is that for you? Well, in the beginning, we, we weren't sure because, of course, like all research projects, we start making product at the let's say the one liter scale, and, but we knew to supply globally this product, we had to get into uh, manufacturing containers that were maybe 4,000 or 6,000 liters. Mm -hmm. and, and we knew that would be a challenge, but, but we, we have now successfully made a uh, very high, um, high scale product uh, at all of our facilities. So that's, that's really important. 
All right, Mr. Huck, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for speaking to us. There is a great deal of anticipation about this vaccine in India. We yeah. need vaccines and in sizable numbers. Hopefully, this should be here sooner than later. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for having me. With no signs of COVID being handled uh, at a global level, key questions continue to be asked on the road ahead. Uh, the Delta strain is now dominant around the world. There are signs of another surge in parts of Europe and perhaps the first signs of a new surge in India as well. There is huge disparity in vaccination rates around the world amidst a desperate urge to open up, which is why we are hearing a lot now about vaccine passports. Are these equitable? Joining us now, the chief scientist of the World Health Organization, Dr. Swamya Swaminathan. Thanks, ma'am, very much uh, for being with us. As usual, lots of questions, many brought in by our viewers. Firstly, when will Covaxin be accepted by the World Health Organization? It's asked because a lot of Indians who've uh, been vaccinated want to ultimately be able to travel with this. Thank you, Vishnu. Nice to be with you again. So on Covaxin, uh, the company Bharat Biotech had a pre-submission discussion with the WHO team that deals with uh, pre-qualification and emergency use listing. So we are expecting the submission of the dossier within the next few days or up to a week. And from then, it usually takes about four to six weeks because there is sometimes uh, uh, some discussion between the company and the committee that's looking at uh, the dossier. Um, so we I expect that within four to six weeks that should be completed, the process. Whether or not it gets uh, the uh, emergency use listing is not something I can tell you today. That's up to the committee. But what we will expedite, of course, is the, uh, uh, is the process it itself. And that's a set process. And Bharat Biotech is very familiar with it because they have a number of pre-qualified vaccines. So I expect uh, that it should be fairly smooth. So second week of August, I think it would, would by then we'd know one way or the other, right? Yes, we should. All right. Um, should the European regulator include Indian vaccines in their vaccine passport? Now, we've seen India get into bilateral agreements with several European countries, but the European vaccine passport doesn't include either Covaxin or Covishield. And that's problematic, if not today, then certainly in the future, once things open up. So shouldn't there be equity in this as well, vaccine passports? Yes, there should. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that WHO does not promote the idea of vaccine passports. And we have said that consistently from the beginning because of the equity issue. Everyone around the world doesn't have equal access to vaccines and therefore using that as a passport to travel or trade uh, is could be discriminatory. But having said that, we are seeing that a number of countries are moving towards using this type of uh, document. It would make uh, travel easier, I suppose, for those uh, uh, countries where there are large uh, percentages of people vaccinated. And we are now uh, discussing with the uh, European Union the issue of including the uh, COVID shield because it's exactly the same as the AstraZeneca vaccine that's manufactured and marketed in Europe. And so uh, we understand the European Union has left it to individual member states to recognize, uh, and they've encouraged them actually to recognize all the vaccines that have uh, received uh, emergency use listing by WHO, and that obviously includes uh, Covishield. Uh, there are six vaccines on that list. So that's the request that we have made, that all WHO uh, emergency use listed vaccines be uh, included in that digital vaccine certificate or vaccine passport. Is Delta Plus a variant of concern to the World Health Organization as well? No, Delta is a variant of concern. In fact, we are not using the word uh, Delta Plus. You know what happens? Once you have a variant of concern, then it accumulates mutations. We know that, uh, so you will find a number of these uh, variations which occur within the Delta strain itself. So we have the AY1 and the AY2 uh, and so on. So at the moment, there is no reason to think that uh, the Delta Plus that's being called is, uh, is a new variant of concern that we need to panic about. I think it's important uh, that we don't panic over each new mutation. This is an expected evolution of the virus. I think the Delta variant is very uh, scary because it's very uh, transmissible 
and it has some other properties as well. And, and so we need we do need the genomic sequencing, the surveillance, the um, and a strategic uh, sequencing so that we we know which variant is going up or down in different parts of the country. And India is huge, of course, so we need a lot of sequencing to get that kind of uh, uh, picture. Well, the clearance of the Moderna vaccine for limited emergency use in India made that the fourth COVID-19 vaccine to be approved for use in our country. The third one was Sputnik V. And that's been soft launched in different cities around the country as part of a pilot phase. In Bengaluru, Manipal Hospital held a four-day vaccination camp for members of the transgender community. Sputnik V is the vaccine of choice. Divya Darshini is a physiotherapist who works for a community-based organization. She is also one of the first recipients in Bengaluru of the Sputnik vaccine. I was eagerly waiting for this vaccine to get vaccinated by Sputnik vaccine. The efficacy of this vaccine is more, as I heard in many social medias and YouTube. So I'm suggesting, I have, I have my interest, I have taken this vaccine. There is a specific segment of the population which require, uh, you know, or prefer to take Sputnik. One, the efficacy is around 92%. And the second thing is that, uh, you know, you complete the entire uh, vaccination uh, in three weeks time the window period is three weeks which is actually the least amongst the uh, you know the other vaccines that are available in the market the transgender community has under four percent uh, vaccinated so when we actually looked at the stats we looked at the segmentation we believe that that is one community which probably needed to pick up on vaccination and we've done that for them but whatever the vaccine used the aim is to get as many people vaccinated as possible as many vaccinations uh, as possible, vaccines as possible, to cover a mammoth population of 1.3 billion. No country would ever undertake such an exercise, probably other than China. Over the last six months, our hospital has engaged with the LGBT community. We have uh, cleared the misconceptions they have, we have educated them, we have allayed the fears that they had, and LGBT community is going to benefit from that. This has been our motive to be all-inclusive. And uh, this population, the LGBT population, should have been taken earlier. We urge every NGO, every uh, corporate hospital to join this kind of a campaign. The private sector in Bengaluru has been actively involved in the vaccination campaign. The eligible population for COVID-19 vaccination in the city is around 99 lakhs, with over 50 lakh doses given so far. The BBMP has said it is targeting almost 1 lakh vaccines a day so that the city is better protected by the time the third wave reaches. With Govind Murthy, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV. Well, it's time now for us to take a short break. There's more coming up. Stay tuned.